Thank you, choir. Uh, before uh, someone, I'd like to just make two announcements. Uh, one is that we are considering uh, uh, going back to two services, uh, 8 o'clock to and 11 o'clock, so that we can redeem space for the Bible study hour beginning August. And so if you uh, uh, link to the middle service, beginning to begin to make the adjustments. Eh? Okay. Uh, the next is we, for, the, for several weeks, we will be going through some of the basics of our faith. Oh, Judy, welcome. Yeah, really, yeah. Uh, some of you don't know that Judy served uh, in this city for many, many years. We, she made her contribution. Thank you. Anyway, uh, um, the, we will be going through some of the basics of our faith for several weeks. Uh, just to re-energize the, the theme of our year, the priority of the kingdom, just want to make sure that everybody understands what their faith is about. So the, the booklets are, are printed. There will be Bible study outlines that are a part of your programs. Uh, so those are going to be there. But if you want to take a booklet, they will, the cost is, uh, is about 13,000 shillings, but we'll, uh, it's, it's been subsidized to 5,000 shillings. So you can uh, pick a, a copy at the end of the service if you want to take one. Uh, but the, the lessons will be in the weekly bulletin. But this would be a good copy to have, to use, to share your faith, to, rather to strengthen other new believers in your life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We have to think about a very foundational subject. We are thankful that you made the sacrifice that makes it possible for us to celebrate our salvation. Holy God, mighty God, you reached out to those of us who had, were not worthy of you, and you reached out to us. As we re review this basic information, energize us so that we have a get, can get a passion for those who are still out who have not yet found you, give us that passion for them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We come to the church as God's people who have, personally, have had a personal encounter with God and together we become a fellowship of believers and people call us Christians or saved, or born again, or children of God, or followers of Christ, or whatever term that describes this new relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. But how do we get there? How do we get here? We get here, but first, first, first of all, understanding that we are sinners. The Bible, in many, many uh, passages, speaks about our inadequacies, our sinfulness. He says in Isaiah 56, 53 verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the, in, in, in the iniquity of all of us. Notice all have sinned. All we like sheep. In Romans chapter 3 verse 9 for we have already been uh, uh, made the charge that Jews and Gentiles are alike, are all under the power of sin. All under the power of sin. As it is written, there's no one, not even one. There's none who understands, there's no one who seeks God. It says in uh, verse 12, all have turned away, they, they have together become worthless. There's no one who does good, not even one. All, again, repeated. And, of course, the most 
the most common verse for all of us on this issue is Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You look in this big, uh, 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 in, in, this, in this church and uh, next to you, all around you, men and women who are, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You and I have failed to meet God's standard. There, the problem is, is that it's, it's, it's not casual because God punishes sin and sin separates us from God. Romans 5.12 Therefore, just as sin entered into the world through one man and death through sin, and in his way death came to all people because all sin. Basic information. All have sinned and then Sin comes into the world and, and God judges it. He says death comes through sin. In uh, the, more, the popular, another popular verse, Romans 6, 23, 4, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because of our sin, two things happen. First, sin brings death. When sin came into the world, through Adam, it opened the door for physical death, but also opened the door for our separation from God, spiritual separation. Adam and Eve have sinned, and, and they can no longer come into the presence of God. They are separated from Him. He calls them out, and they, they, they are covering themselves. There's a disconnect between them and God, and that is true of every one of us, because of our sin, sin separates us from, from God. But the good news is, God has provided a way out of our predicament. He gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, okay, to die in our place. Of course, the big theological word is substitu substitu substitutionary atonement. In other words, he dies in our place. This picture starts way back in the Old Testament of, of, of a substitute, one uh, uh, some uh, 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 punishment that is meted on one to save another. Remember, uh, in Exodus 12, God speaks to the, to, 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 to the men of Israel. He tells them the angel of death is going to go through, uh, through Egypt and is going to, to take the firstborn sons in Egypt. But for Israel, for God's people, all they needed to do was to take the the blood of the lamb and put it on the door frames so that when the angel of death comes through the firstborn sons of, of, of Israel would be saved the family is uh, the, 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 the blood spread on the doorposts spares the judgment of the angel of death but for the Egyptians, there was no blood to save their firstborns. We see this continuing practice uh, in the worship of God's people. Every sin offering, every guilt offering, as the worshiper lays the hands on an unblemished, unblemished animal that signifies that the animal represents this worshiper. The animal is slain, it is killed, and its, bl uh, its blood is poured on the altar, and the worshiper is accepted and reconciled to God. Not because he's good, not because he's the best, but because there's a price that has been paid. This, the sacrifice of the lamb covers his sin. The New Testament places the same image on our Lord Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his love for us 
that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we now have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were still for if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The separated people, people fr separated from God, are reconciled because death has happened. The blood has been shed on behalf of the child of God who has been now accepted, not because of what is done, but because of Christ, what Christ has done. Now we, we have hope to Christ. In Christ we find forgiveness. So that what you do for this forgiveness to become a reality in life is to just uh, receive what has been offered. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to, to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might, might be fully met in us who do, who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. See, we have been shielded from the judgment that was due us. It has been made possible by the death of Christ. This is basic information for every believer. But how do does it happen? It does not become reality until every individual has made a personal decision. It doesn't become a reality for you until you've made a step to accept it for yourself. It's just like uh, when mama serves food, it is simply food on the table until you take the time to you, you, you take the step to have it. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, 11 says, If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. All scripture says anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. So first, you must declare Jesus as Lord. This is means that you acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. He's indeed the Lord of the universe. The, 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 the Apostle Paul tells us there was nothing that was created without him in Colossians. Nothing. Everything. And we are told before him, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he is Lord. But it must go beyond that knowledge, that acknowledgement, where it becomes a personal acknowledgement, where you submit to the Lordship of Christ. Now, one of, the, uh, one of the challenges of preaching in the same church is you repeat your illustrations sometimes. But for me, every time I read this text, one of the memories of my youthful years that comes to mind was when I was sharing the gospel with a lady in Catalema Estates. Uh, this lady had uh, a husband who was called Mike. Now, I don't know who your, uh, who your image of, uh, of uh, uh, handsome uh, uh, dude is in this church, but... He was, the, he was, the, he was that, that kind of a guy who had all the muscles in the right place and was well built and was called Mike, was the husband of this lady. So I read this uh, text to her and I share with her that she needed to accept Jesus as Lord for her to be saved. Hello. 
and she she says uh, uh, she says to me what does that mean i said to her it means that you have to jesus has to become number one in your life everything else has to take second place jesus has to be your number one and then she says naye mike yagula kaunga it is mike who buys the portion in other words she's struggling to to make jesus number one when mike is the one who buys the portion he's the one who's the providing for the home now you are telling me to ask somebody else to be number one no 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 so she i mean I, the the discussion ended i went away two weeks later unfortunately mike died in an accident and couldn't buy the portion anymore but jesus was still on the throne and, and to we you have to come to that point where everything in your life submits to Christ where he becomes number 1 whether it is mike or whether it is your job or whether it is your wife or husband or or business or or family he invites you to come but he doesn't want to be competing with anything else he needs to be number 1 when you come to that point in your life and you acknowledge that and you confess that the bible says then you are saved you become a beneficiary of this promise of salvation so that you start a journey and this salvation uh is expressed in scripture in at least three ways or three three tenses the first tense is the present perfect tense something has happened in my life but it is continuing i am saved and other i was saved i am saved but this is a continuing experience at this point i am saved because the eternal consequences of my sin have been covered by jesus the penalty of my sin has been taken on the cross by jesus i now have a promise as the promises in in john 10 27 29 my sheep listen to my voice i know them they follow me i give them eternal life they will never perish no one will snatch them out of my hand my father who has given them to me is greater than all no one can snatch them out of my 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 hand you have this promise that christ has taken you on you are saved you are his you are his child you are his sheep and no one will take you out of his hands i just remember again uh, uh when i worked with the baptist student center going to uh uh to university hall and there was a a a a schoolmate from the village in bukoya who was at university then and hadn't gone to university myself at that point i was in seminary and uh in his mind him being at university and being being at seminary he was uh, better off than me and so i just remember sharing my faith with this uh, old schoolmate and he says mwingi mwingi aba lokuli twa bala bada nawe nja kuwa hiyo mwezi gumu hiyo nja kubo bivuddeko eh mwenge we've seen you people who say things like you're saying we will give you one month you will be done with it believe me 81 it is ni- uh, it is 2024 and i'm still going on there's a promise that he will hold us and no one no one has the ability to snatch at us uh, us out of his hands so we are saved i am saved perfect huh? present perfect tense i am this has happened and it's an ongoing journey but some the, the, the other verb Uh, on this salvation in scripture is a continuing experience what you call the present continuous tense i wasn't just saved 
I am being saved. God is at work in my life to help me overcome sin, to help me overcome the power of sin. That is why we wonder when you say you are saved and we watch you walking and we don't see any difference. We wonder because God is true will take you as you are. Any day as you are. But he has no intentions of leaving you that way. I remember uh, one of my youthful crimes was we were preaching in uh, Fort Porto in a place called Ramkora. We were showing the Jesus film. And this guy was so drunk, he started peeing on the sidelines of uh, where we were meeting. I was going to miss, and, and you know, it just, uh, and I kept thinking, an old man, I mean, uh, eh? is, is, is an adult, and he's peeing in, the, in public. He was so drunk, he didn't know what I was doing. And, and uh, I took the law into my hands. I got a stick and I spanked him and he went away. But guess what? He got, came back the next day and he got saved. And, uh, uh, and, and, and we went back several years later and this man was still in the church. He, he, and, uh, he, he was here, he got saved and something changed in his life. He was a different man because Yes, we, we come to faith, we get saved, but we don't st stop there. God is at work in our lives, and there must be ongoing change. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews 10, 14. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. Okay? This has happened, but there's an ongoing process. One of the challenges of today's church is many people who say, I am saved. But really you look for the work and it is not there. It has become the, made the church weak. The African church has is, 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 is been described as, as a mile wild, wide and an inch deep. Because people come to make a confession of faith, but it's not followed by a walk. We go to the community to preach the gospel. And the somebody has a neighbor who says they are saved. And there's nothing saved about them. And so while we are preaching, they are saying, ah, we've seen that already. We've had that already. Because the testimony does not help our words. We were saved. We are being saved. We have a future tense of our salvation. We will be saved. A time is coming when you and I will live in the presence of God forever where we will not have to worry about sin. It will not be one of our problems. The Apostle Paul puts it it's when in Philippians 3.20. But our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. We will be like him. And at that point, sin will not be a problem. The, the news is that when we become children of God, they, 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 it's not just here we look into the future. So we're not just here. We are on the walk, but the walk sees a future. This is how John puts it in 1 John chapter uh, uh, 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Even that 
is not part of my outline, but it's, it's, it's deep. That you have come to faith. You are a child of God. I have seen uh, uh, children of prominent people. How they, they, they walk with a, a mood eh? so that you know they, eh? they are not regular. My sister, my brother and sister, you are not regular. We've been called children of God. That's what we are. We are called, and the text says that we, that's what we are called, and not just what we are called, that's what we are. Sirunderew. Chituf. That's what we are. And the reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now, what, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been known. We have come to faith. We become children of God. We are walking. But there's a future. It is not clear what it will all look like. That's what John is saying. We're not quite sure. We hear about heaven. We talk about heaven. None of us has been there. No brother has gone and come back to tell us. We really have no picture. Uh, no, we don't know enough. But we do know. John tells us that God has already told us. When Christ appears, we shall all be like him. We shall see him as he is. The limitations of our body, the limitations of our mind, the limitations of who we are will cease. We shall be like him. And this is the application as, as far as John is concerned for you and me. All who have this hope purify themselves just as it's pure. If this is your hope, then it's a journey of walking in purity, of letting God do his work in your life. So I must conclude. This is today is a simple message to remind us about our salvation. And we have said the price has been paid. We have been invited. If you've come to faith and Jesus has become Lord of your life, you say you are saved. It must not stop there. We must be in the work, allowing God to do his work in us as we continue to look forward. So today, if you're not saved, let this be the day. We're going to take our time to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It is one of those things that God thought was important for us to do because as the old song says, we forget so soon. Just to remind us that a price was paid, blood was shed so that we can have this salvation that we are talking about. If you have never come to that point, today is your day. But if you're saved, I hope that uh, our reflection today will increase your sense of gratitude for what has happened in your life, for the salvation that has become yours. But also pray beyond gratitude that will be a passion that develops in you to not keep that information to yourself. Can you imagine having the best news in the world and keeping it to yourself? You have the best news in the world? Please don't keep it to yourself. Share it. But also, in terms of application, is to see beyond the present. You know how we all start our week. I, at the beginning of a week, I do my to-do lists. I know how you start the week, and uh, it's very easy to only think about uh, cement and mortar. 
the other plot and that and the bricks and the cement and the and the and this business and that investment and you know it's very easy to spend a week and the only agenda in your mind is the things that are for here I have done a few funerals in my life. And it's amazing uh, when somebody dies. There was a sister who died and I had to do her funeral. And had a beautiful car. So when we went in the, at home to say, you know, to bring condolences to the family. Her car was there. And the days that followed, the relatives were hustling with each other who was going to take the car. And suddenly the car was meant nothing. And we all need the cars. I do need uh, cars. I, I like nice cars. I, I can't quite uh, keep them nice. But, uh, 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 but, but we have to be able to have eyes that look beyond those things because we see a future. That's what John tells us. There's a future beyond this. And so as we go about today, this week's uh, events and, and, and schedules and ticking off our to-do lists, I hope that you will be asking the question in my to-do list this week. What is in this my to-do list that goes beyond this current life? Is there some investment of my life that is more than cement and mortar? More than school fees? Is there some invest in my life that has an eternal bearing? If you understand the message of salvation, that has to be a way you think about life. And the Lord knew that we are bound to forget. So he decided that he'll give us as a church something to do regularly to remind us that the price has been paid. So that a new relationship is established. So that our, we would live for more than this world. So that we would know we found the, through the blood of Christ we've been accepted into the presence of God. If you open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 11, the Apostle Paul records and explains what it is about. He says in verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that on the night the Lord, was, the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it. In remembrance of me. For whatever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And then he goes to tell us to take, him, to take time to, to examine ourselves as we come to the Lord's table. Uh, he gave us this memorial, a, a way to remember, remind us. Some people call it the Lord's table because this happens at the, at, at the table with the disciples and, and, and the two elements are a reminder of his body and his, his blood that were sacrificed so that this new relationship that makes our salvation possible uh, is established. Some people call this the Eucharist, which means grace. It is a grace that God, a righteous God, would welcome us sinful people and 
pay the price so that really we come to him not by our own strength we come simply by grace so this is a time first of all to examine ourselves to see if we have taken this uh, offer to us seriously whether there's something that is competing in our hearts that we need to surrender to him this is also a time to come to God with gratitude so we'll take a few minutes of quiet uh, the choir don't sing let's take a few minutes of quiet let's uh, dialogue with God and after that I'll ask Elisha to lead us in, in prayer Lord we thank you for this picture of the drink and the bread that we take remembering the blood that was shed and the body that was broken for us we who are sinners who are enemies who had no way of fellowship with you but in your love you gave your son and by grace that we can be called children by believing we are thankful lord that through this sacrifice we can be called children through this sacrifice we can come before the throne of grace father i pray that as we partake of it that if there is anyone who is burdened by their sins that we bring them all at your feet if there is anyone who is weakened in their body by sickness the lord you be pleased to heal them because by your stripes we are healed that if there is anyone gripped by fear that they will be reminded of the place we have in you because of the blood that you shed and the body that was broken and if there is anyone here who has never believed you that still this will be a picture and through that that you convict them of their sin and that they will believe you so that we can always partake of this together oh lord thank you jesus for this sacrifice in your name we pray and believe amen, amen.